Hello everyone and welcome back. So what I'm about to show you is in my opinion the best method or the best way to get started with JavaScript provided that you have some basic knowledge in HTML and CSS. So let's get started. So I'm going to create a project over here in my desktop in this folder location. I'll just name this JavaScript uh, 101. So selecting that folder, clicking this button, and let's create our file here, index.html. And of course, we know how to connect a CSS file, right? So we are creating now our uh, styles.css. So after creating our styles.css, uh, we can now go ahead and create our HTML template over here. And we know that in CSS, we can type here a link and link that file using the href attribute and selecting the file over here. So we can actually do something like this in a similar fashion when it comes to JavaScript. So for JavaScript, we'll right click here. I'm going to type here a file name. You can name it whatever you want. I will just type script.js. So HTML has the .html extension. CSS has the .css extension. And JavaScript has the extension of .js. If we use link to connect our CSS into our HTML document. In JavaScript, we use a script. Okay, so just type the word script, press tab on the keyboard, and it will autocomplete. All right, so instead of href, we type here src or the source, and then we type here double quotes. And now we type our file here, our JavaScript file. And as you can see, it is detected right now the moment I type the letters sc. So I'll just click on that. And once we did this, our JavaScript file is now connected into our HTML document. Now, let's create a element here called h1, and I will type here the text JavaScript. And I'm going to right-click in index.html. Oops, not open to the side, but right-click and open with live server uh, so that we will be able to see uh, what's going to happen in our project. And I just zoom in so you can see that clearly, as well as here in my VS Code. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right, so now we have this h1. In CSS, we can target this h1, right, by writing here h1 and then open in curly brackets. Then, for example, if you want to change the color of the text, we type the color property. Then we specify the color over here, for example, red. Now we were able to change the color of that text in CSS. So if it's a margin, we type the margin property over here. And for example, the value for uh, 10 pixels. So this is the style of writing in CSS. In a similar fashion as well, we can do something like that in JavaScript. So for example, we are going to change the color of this using JavaScript. So we say right here, document. When I say document or when we write document over here, we are referred to the actual HTML itself. We are referring to this one, okay? The entire document, this one that we see right now. And let me type something here. I'm going to explain this later on. And then open and close parentheses and then double quotes over here. And I'm going to type here H1, right? By the way, single quote, let me go ahead and delete that. Single quotes will work as well. I'm going to type H1. So by typing this, I'm referring to the document and I wanted to select, okay? I wanted to select H1. And after that, that h1 what what is it that we are going to do with this h1 that h1 i'm going to change the style what specific style i'm going to change the color into something like blue right see my colon here at the end if i'm going to save this now we were able to change that color into blue right so in CSS, this is how we do it we use these curly brackets assign some properties, and in JavaScript, we see document, query selector, targeting the H1, type here the tag name that you wanted to target, the specific style, which is the color, now it is blue, right? So if it's a background color, in CSS, we do this. So background color, right? For example, uh, green, now we have that green, there's a minus sign over here or the hyphen. We can't do that in JavaScript because minus in JavaScript is being used for calculation. So instead of using this 
hyphen or minus sign, we, we get rid of that, but we have to type it this way. Background, uh, there it is, background. And for the C, we are going to capitalize that, right? And here, for example, the background color, we are going to change something like yellow. Save that. Now we're back with the text color, which is specified in our CSS file. But in our JavaScript, we have a specified yellow as the background color, and we have something like this. So what we have done is we want, we are targeting the document, right? Then, as you can see, query selector. We are selecting H1. Query, the synonym of query is request, okay? So that means we have a request to select this H1 element. We wanted to change the style. We wanted to change the specific styling background color and change it to yellow. And right here, you can also use a hex value just like in CSS. For example, the dark gray color, the 242424, and we can copy this and change the color of the text to white, FFF, right? Save this, and as you can see, we get something like this. If we wanted to increase the padding, let's paste it again. The, one, the styling that we wanted to change is the padding, and here we are going to type, for example, 50 pixels. Let me put this at the side before I save it so we can see the changes. Save this, now we have a padding of 50 pixels, as you can see right here. There it is. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see what's happening. Okay, so now there's actually a way so that we don't have to write everything like this long line. We can actually store this in a variable. For example, var h1 over here, or you can say my h1, you can name it whatever you want, and uh, equal to that entire line, all right? So my, I'll just put here's uh, underscore. My h1 is equal to this, and now uh, that we have all of this is stored in this variable, we can actually remove that everything here. So right now, the styling that is affecting here is only the CSS. It has a color of red. Uh, you know what? This changes into white. And then the background color, let's, uh, by default, uh, let's set a, uh, a dark gray, uh, something like that. And then text align center. There you go. So now in JavaScript, now that we have stored this uh, way of selecting the h1 into this variable, what we can do now is we can just use that variable, my h1, and then we can say style dot color. For example, we want to change that into yellow. Now we have yellow. It is being overridden because the, the CSS comes first, and then later on when this code is executed, there's a code in the script.js, which is this one. So let's make your understanding of variable a little bit uh, deeper. So here, for example, I have a var color one is equals to red, right? And then var color two is equals to green. And let's have another one. All right. So now that we have these variables that is containing the information red. Okay, by the way, when you do this, JavaScript creates this information into the memory computer and label it as color one. So anyway, Right now, our main point is we can store this information into this variable, and we can utilize this later on. For example, here, I'm going to delete this, and I wanted the color of my H1 to be color 3, so I'll just type here color 3. I just copy-pasted it. Now we have that effect over there. All right, so now let's have a button over here because, you know, uh, uh, when the user uses the website, they interact, right? So for example, this button, I'm going to name this uh, click me. So we have that. And this is how users interact with the website, right? With the graphic elements, the input boxes, text area, some buttons uh, like this one. And we expect the button to do something when we click on it. Right now we have a button, but it doesn't do anything. So we are now entering formally the programming part when it comes to the web development. And JavaScript is the programming language of the web. So. Earlier, I have mentioned that this, this, this is a request right here, all right? Query selector, we are selecting H1. It's, it's actually a, a function. Right now, when we hover on it, it says it's a method. A method is essentially a function, 
that's the thing that you have to know right now. Don't worry about it too much. Just know that this is a function. It does something. It select this element h1. Not only the tag name, we can actually have here, for example, if we have added an ID attribute, uh, for example, title, all right? And in CSS, we use a pound sign over here, and then we type the name of the ID, title, right? So uh, in HTML, we have this ID. If you wanted to style that in CSS, we use this pound sign. Sim in a similar fashion, we do the same thing in JavaScript. Now, we are not going to target H1. We are going to target the ID title. As you can see, this is a similarity in JavaScript and CSS. This is how we target that element with an ID of title in CSS. And this is how we do it in JavaScript using the pound sign as well and in the title. So going back to the function, this one right here, in which what it does is to select the element. So we can have our own function that if, when we click this button, maybe we will make the background uh, in a different color. All right, so let's do that. So to create your own function, we type the function keyword. And then after that, we are going to name our function. So for example, I will name this change to, for example, blue, right? That's the name of our function. And then we type this open and curly parenthesis and then curly brackets. So this is just the syntax that we have to get used to. What we are going to do is change the background color of this element. So we are now going to use this variable. We can target that variable. We want to change the style of the background color, right, into blue. Make sure to have a semicolon here at the end. So this is a function in which when we execute this function, this code right here will be triggered in which the background will change to blue when we click this. Right now, it doesn't do anything yet because we just created a function. We are not using it yet. So let's go ahead and use that. Let's go ahead and copy this. Let's head back to index.html. And here in the button, we can add an attribute called onClick. There you have it. And what we're going to do is paste the function over here, the one that we copied from our JavaScript file, which is the function that we have created. So after we did that, let's save our work and let's go ahead and click this button. And as you can see, we were able to change the color. So that's how you get started with JavaScript. Using your existing knowledge in HTML and in CSS, figure out how you can do that in JavaScript. We are able to cover variables in which a way to store data that we can use later on. We were also able to create our own function, major component, major knowledge that you have to learn in JavaScript on how to create your own function. And then we use this button and execute that function that when a user, let's go back over here and refresh, that when a user click this, it changes to blue. So with this foundation of knowledge, you have now an idea that when somebody click this button, Maybe it's a form. That form will be submitted to a database or somewhere else. And that happens here in JavaScript. Right now, we only made a very simple example. By clicking that button, we changed something, a style into blue. I hope that this has been informative for you. See you in the next one.